We installed a 200 watt solar panel on the roof of this truck camper to power up a 100 amp hour DIY power station. Today, we're gonna to show you step-by-step -step how we installed the solar panel and how we installed all of the wiring. We're also gonna do some testing to see how much power the system actually puts out. This is our solar panel. This is a new power off-grid. This is actually a bifacial panel, 200 watts. We're gonna get this thing on the roof and we're gonna mount it with this. Already has the entrance node already made into it. We've got Z clips and some lap seal. So it should be a pretty straightforward installation. We're gonna drill a hole to drop this down through, get it uh, over here where we can plug into our power station. And then of course we'll anchor it to the roof with the Z clips. But first we gotta get it up there and get it positioned and see where we want it. All right, now we're finding the center and we're gonna find out exactly where to mount this solar panel. All right, that's got our center mark. We're gonna come back about 18 inches and we're just gonna square it up. So 18 inches back, we've got the center. We're gonna measure out so that we know exactly where we're gonna put this solar panel. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is turn this panel upside down and get our brackets mounted. And Roger's camper has the bed rug in it, so it's nice and soft. The plan here is gonna be get it centered we're gonna mark the holes, get them drilled. We also have to drill a hole for the node. We're gonna put the node back here and luckily the node is gonna be under the panel. It's a new day and we're working on this solar panel, trying to get this thing mounted on Roger's truck. We are actually camping at a campground. So we're gonna be doing this project with these nice trees as a backdrop. So let's take a look at this solar panel. We've made a few changes uh, in our plan. This hardware kit only came with one bolt for each one of these Z clips. I don't really like the idea of going down the road with just one bolt. So we're gonna actually move one of these over to here and add a second one. That way there will be two bolts on each one of these. definitely think that two bolts will be better than one. We've got all four brackets are mounted now with their two bolts. We're going to get this on top of the camper shell and see if we can find the marks that we made a few days ago. Flip him over there. To attach the solar panel to the roof, we're going to use these quarter 20 bolts. These are two inches long. There are plenty to go down through there. And then I've got nylon locking nuts and some big fender washers to put underneath. We've got eight holes to drill. Let's get those drilled. Can you see it? Uh, the other one will be closer to the cab. So we're drilling these holes. Roger is down in the cab. We've got those lights on the ceiling. So we're trying not to drill into the lights down there. Everything's good, let's drill this other one. We're dry fitting all eight of these bolts. We're gonna make sure that they all fit before we tighten anything down. We're gonna make sure that everything is good. I drilled a pilot hole there. That's gonna be for the node. And then we gotta drill a pretty significant hole to get both these wires through there. So I'm gonna sneak up on it. The next one is what, half inch? Let's go inside and see what that looks like. All right, we need to make it a little bit bigger. We've got the wires fished down in there for our node. This is gonna be awesome because the node is gonna be under the solar panel. We've got uh, three screws to put in here and then we'll use the lap seal. To attach the node, we're gonna use these self tappers that we have and it looks like it'll hold three of them. Even though those are self tappers, I thought a pilot hole would probably be a good idea. This is the brand of lap seal that we're gonna use. Dicor lap sealant here. Let's get some uh, some of this uh, smeared around our holes and make a good seal on this thing because we don't want any leaks. 
Now this stuff is self-leveling. I'm just trying to make sure everything is sealed up and then it can level itself out. That looks pretty good to me. And then the panel will be on top of it, which will also help. Nice. All right, for these Z-clips, I'm not gonna be able to get to the back side, so our plan is to just kind of lay a bead on the back edge, let it go out, and then we'll set the foot down in there. So that Z-clip foot will be setting on it there, and then I'll be able to come around and on top of the bolts. Raj, you wanna hold that up in the air. All right, let me get these same way. There we go. And this guy. Okay, so here comes the tricky part. All right, we're gonna try to get this thing set into place. All right, now we're gonna drop our bolts down in. Let's get all eight bolts snugged up from the bottom, and then we'll put the die core around all of these bolts. That looks pretty good. Fender washer, nylon nut. All eight bolts are nice and tight. Let's take our die core and get that sealed all around to weatherproof this thing. We've got the wire coming in from the solar panel down through the roof. We're gonna take some of these little wire holders and get this thing buttoned up against the ceiling and get this thing routed around down to our power station what do you think about right in there yeah it looks great to me so we came through the roof here and then we came to the right side and down the bottom just following the frame yeah it looks pretty clean yeah that actually worked out pretty great. Now we're going to plug it into the power station and check the output. For the wire coming in from the roof, from the solar panel, that wire is going to connect to the power station with this MC4 node. Originally, we had an SAE2 pin that we were going to use for a portable solar panel. But now that we're going to have the 200 watt panel on the roof, we're going to use regular MC4 connectors. Let's get this installed in the power station. That's got our negative connected to our solar charge controller. Now I'm going to run the positive wire in and connect it to the solar charge controller. It's clearly marked on the back of the charge controller, solar panel coming in and wires going out to the battery. For these MC4 connectors, I'm just sliding these plastic nuts on first, and then I'm gonna slide the node over top of it. And then we're gonna crimp the ends on the cables before we put the connectors on. This connector is gonna go on the negative, and this connector is gonna go on the positive. And now the positive. And these are threaded and I already put the nuts on. So now we're just going to thread the nuts to the back to secure them to the node. There's one and there's two. We'll be sure to put affiliate links for all of the components that we used in this build down in the video description so you guys can check them out for yourself. That gets our solar panel plugged into the power station. This is our 100 amp hour DIY power station. We'll be sure to link to the build video for this whole project at the end of today's video. But let's fire up the lead time uh, Bluetooth app. Try to get a feel for how many, uh, how many watts we have coming in from our solar panel. When I woke up this morning, I had about 86% charge on the battery. Now, what I use overnight is the refrigerator and I also charge my phone. I also use my LED lights. Here we have the inside roof lights. We also have some rock lights below here that illuminate. And also this here, this is a light for prepping, cooking, 
it lights up nice at night. All right, let's take a look at the app. Looks like we got about 56 watts of power. Yep, 56 watts coming in. Now let's take a look at the solar panel. Looks like we still have some shaded spots on the solar panel. Let's check back later when we have more sun. All right, now the sun is almost directly above us right now. Let's take a look at the panel and see if there's any shade on it. Let's go take a look and see how many watts are coming in. Right now the system is about 98% charge. We should reach 100% in about a half an hour. 122 watts from a 200 watt panel might seem uh, a little lacking. But now keep in mind, we're not able to adjust the angle of the panel to accommodate the sun. Right now the sun's directly above us and that's what we're getting. Guys, I'm really excited to have the option of solar charging now. Right, he has been using about 15% overnight with the cooler, charging the phone, running a few LED lights, and he's able to make all of that back and accommodate the usage throughout the day with no problem in just a few hours. What do you guys think about this solar power setup? Leave a comment and let us know. If you guys want to see a complete walkthrough of Roger's truck camper setup, we'll leave a link to that video right here. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.